Hello, my name is Adrian Goldberg and welcome to the Byline Times podcast. The Byline Times is what the papers don't say, what radio doesn't report and what telly doesn't tell you. This time, George Galloway's victory in the Rochdale by-election. Galloway fought on a platform opposing the Labour Party stance on Gaza. This was his message to Keir Starmer after his victory was announced. Keir Starmer, this is for Gaza. You have paid, and you will pay, a high price for the role that you have played in enabling, encouraging, and covering for the catastrophe presently going on in occupied Palestine in the Gaza Strip. So does Galloway's victory, as he suggests, reflect a shift in the tectonic plates of British politics? Or is it just a one-off caused in part at least by the caused in part at least by Labour's decision to disown its candidate, Azar Ali, after he made anti-Semitic remarks? John Tong is a professor of politics at Liverpool University, and he joins me now. John, this was a remarkable win by George Galloway. We have to acknowledge that, don't we? It was a sensational win uh, at the end of a remarkable by-election, the like of which I've never seen in 30-odd years of covering by-elections. George Galloway mobilised lots of voters in Rochdale. Turnout was uh, not particularly low, as some people had predicted, at 40%, and George Galloway got the votes of four in every 10 Rochdale voters. Uh, It wasn't just about Muslims coming out to vote for George Galloway either. The Muslim vote is not as big as some people assumed it in Rochdale. It's about one in five voters at the last census identified as as Muslim. So George Galloway mobilised lots of people. It is a great what if question. If the Labour candidate had not been disowned by Labour, would George Galloway have won anyway? I think it certainly would have been very competitive. uh, That's for sure. And you've got to remember George Galloway's election record is remarkable. Um, He won different seats for Labour, won four elections for Labour. He has won a number of elections for the Respect Party. Uh, He's now winning for the Workers' Party uh, of Britain. He's won as many parliamentary seats as did Winston Churchill. So he is a formidable election campaigner. He's a formidable orator. He's massively controversial. You know, George Controversy is a label that would apply to him just as much as George Galloway. He's massively controversial, but he can mobilise sections of the electorate on particular causes. Was the Iraq war once upon a time, uh, this time in Gaza? Yes, I mean, he has been accused by Jewish groups of Jew baiting, for example. Some people accusing of being anti-Semitic, which I'm sure is a charge that he would deny. I think it's very interesting, though, the point that you make about the Muslim vote, because I think in the coverage that I've seen and heard so far, there has been an assumption that Galloway's victory was almost entirely due to a large Muslim population getting behind him in Rochdale. You're saying that the Muslim population isn't large enough to account for his substantial victory. Well, looking at his performance, it would have needed every Muslim to go out and vote for George Galloway in Rochdale, and clearly that that didn't happen. Uh, He did, for sure, mobilise a significant section of the Muslim population in Rochdale, who may also have felt disenfranchised by the fact that Azhar Ali had been disowned by Labour, and so there was no official Labour candidate. That cleared the path for George Galloway, for sure. But, you know, he also mobilised people with genuine concerns about the humanitarian crisis, or as George Galloway would label it, the genocide in Gaza, uh, people were, were, you know, vexed about that and wanted to express an opinion. There's some survey opinion as well that uh, suggests that of those who voted, of those Muslims who voted Labour at the last general election, only 60% would do so again. So there is a section of the Muslim population that is really angry over Gaza, doesn't think that Labour has done enough on it, although quite what Labour can do is another matter. But they clearly think that Keir Starmer has been equivocal on the issue of a ceasefire. Uh, And so it was a perfect storm for George Galloway. He could, you know, mop up those disaffected constituencies amongst the Muslim vote and those, you know, who 
who wraps on, on the left in Rochdale who didn't have a Labour candidate to support. It's worth remembering, Labour won more votes than all the parties put together at the last two general elections in Rochdale. It has been a safe-ish Labour town for some uh, time now. If you take the Labour candidate out of the ring, effectively, then you know that offers potentially a lot of votes for George Galloway. It is a very special circumstance, though, isn't it, having no Labour candidate at any election? Do we know to what extent the non-Muslim voters were motivated by concern for Labour's position over Gaza, for example? Without having the profile of how Muslim Christian populations and those of no religion voted in Rochdale, we can't be sure. What we do know is that this was a real fusion of international as in Gaza, and local issues. Because if you look at the other good performance uh, at the Rochdale by-election, it was by the local independent candidate, David Tully, who got 6,000 votes. George Galloway complimented him, indeed, in George Galloway's own victory speech. And he did focus very much upon local issues, the lack of maternity services within Rochdale, the uh, difficult financial plight at the moment of Rochdale FC uh, in the National League, those sort of issues he very much focused upon. Whereas George Galloway, whilst he didn't neglect local issues and said, look, you know, the lack of maternity services, you can't be born in Rochdale, even if you're from Rochdale. Um, But, you know, George Galloway made no secret that he wanted Gaza front, left and centre of this. And his opening remarks at his victory speech didn't exactly miss the wall. You know, the first words that came out of his mouth were Keir Starmer, uh, this is for you. So we know what George Galloway's primary focus was in this campaign. As you say, a terrific performance by the runner-up in the election as well. Somebody that I suspect most people have never heard of outside of Rochdale, a guy called David Tully, standing as an independent. Again, I just wonder if that is uh, his relative success in coming second is a consequence of Labour being out of the race or whether it tells us something about a disaffection with the Westminster parties amongst the electorates? There clearly is disaffection with the, with the Westminster parties. I mean, Labour's got a very handsome polling leader over the Conservatives, but it's not to say that everyone is hugely enthusiastic uh, for the Labour Party uh, and can't wait to usher it into, into government. There is broader disaffection. Uh, and it was a quite a remarkable performance by an independent candidate to get six and a half thousand votes was, was, was quite something mobilizing on local issues. Normally, candidates can mobilize on local indi- issues as independents in local elections, council elections. But it's much harder at, uh, in a parliamentary contest. And yet he managed to do that. So there, there is disaffection. There's disaffection amongst the section of the electorate uh, who think, what is Keir Starmer doing on Gaza? And that was the constituency that George Galloway mobilised. There's disaffection with the big two more broadly. And if you look, you know, the big two, the so-called big two, were were, were out of the equation. They only got, in fact, the big three, if you want to include the Lib Dems, only combined got about 20% of the vote. So um, that's, you know, a remarkably poor uh, performance. Of course, you know, you have to factor in that that Labour's candidate had been disowned. That's a big, big, uh, important thing to say. In some ways, I do wonder, in terms of, of... which, which was the worst result for Keir Starmer? George Galloway will be a nuisance in one sense for Labour because Labour has bigger divisions on Israel-Palestine. Uh, some of, of Labour's backbenchers will be sympathetic to the George Galloway position. On the other hand, if Azar Ali, had, the Labour's candidate, had been uh, elected, um, that would have posed problems for Keir Starmer because he's still, he's still a member of the Labour Party. Uh, he's still a, a, a councillor who was elected on a Labour ticket as well. Would Keir Starmer have ever been able to offer the whip to him? Uh, and he'd be sat there as a daily reminder in Parliament of the embarrassment Labour has suffered at this by-election, where they've lost a safe seat. So th- there was no way, th- there was one party that could only lose last night. It was Labour. But it wasn't a good night either for, for any of the main parties. No, indeed. And uh, I think Keir Starmer's lost at least eight of his front benches over this issue. The Byline Times political editor, Adam Bienkoff, has been sceptical about whether Gaza could cause a significant enough split in the Labour Party to seriously damage its chances of winning the next election. George Galloway obviously hopes that may be the case, and he's warned 
that in the West Midlands, for example, and in other parts of the country where there are large numbers of Muslims living, that he's he's gunning for Labour in these areas. Do you think that he he can shake the tree in that sense nationally? I think George Galloway will struggle to shake the tree nationally. Uh, if there were 650 George Galloways standing in every UK constituency, things might look rather different. But the fact is the Workers' Party of Britain is broadly him uh, and a few others. Uh, it's very, very difficult as well to mobilise on an issue which does not directly involve Britain in many ways. George Galloway's previous campaign, where he stirred things up, was, was on the Iraq war. Britain had direct involvement in that, and that did... Anxieties over the Iraq war did contribute to Tony Blair's majority dropping from a massive 177 in 2001 down to 66 in 2005. This is different. Labour, the Conservatives, whoever can pass as many resolutions, parliamentary resolutions, as they want on Gaza. But the idea that Benjamin Netanyahu is watching to see what Westminster does in terms of his policy on Gaza is frankly for the birds. And therein lies the difficulty. You can organise protests, and we've hardly been short of protests on the Palestinian question. You can get George Galloway elected to Parliament, but there is precious little that can be done. Ultimately, the only way you would get a policy change in Israel, perhaps, is either you have a diff different government in Israel or you get an American withholding of funding. George Galloway being elected as Member of Parliament for Rochdale, whilst it was a dramatic moment, in terms of its broader political significance, I, I think it's probably on the very much on the low side. I'll come back to that, but just a reflection on George Galloway. I know George Galloway. I used to present a show on Talk Sport where George Galloway had a regular weekend programme. He's a fantastic orator. He's been on Celebrity Big Brother. He is a kind of superstar politician in some ways. He's a, a maverick and he is a very colourful character, whether or not people agree with his politics. So I suppose that goes to the point that you're making, that not every candidate for the Workers' Party of Great Britain will be George Galloway. And certainly when he was leading the Respect Party, he stood out head and shoulders above anybody else in the Respect Party, apart perhaps from Salmi Yacoub, who did have a, a national following and was a national figure in the party as well, and with whom Galloway subsequently fell out. So it, it does kind of feel as though Galloway has to be number one in a field of one in his own party. Yeah, it's the George Galloway party. That's not to be dis disrespectful to George uh, Galloway, because he is, as you say, a fantastic orator, a brilliant campaigner. Have a look at all the seats he's won. You can say, well, it was easy when in the back back in the day when George Galloway was Labour candidate for Glasgow Hillhead and Glasgow Kelvin, although they were not that safe Labour seats. Uh, but he 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 won both of those. Uh, he won Bethnal Green and Bow. He won Bradford West. He won Rochdale last night. That's remarkable. I mean, it's absolutely extraordinary. His election record is, you know, and people say, well, George Galloway, he's toxic. Well, he's not toxic to a section of the electorate because they keep returning him for different places. It's been hard sometimes for George Galloway to retain those places, though. And yes, he can mobilise discontent. And he, you know, there's plenty of discontent within among some people over what's happening in Gaza. But sustaining it is much more difficult. You've got to remember, when we come to the general election, people will be looking at who's going to, who's best place to run the economy. Not so many people's votes will be on uh, Gaza. It's simply, you know, whether that's right or wrong, we can, we can debate. But British foreign policy does not directly exert much influence in terms of what happens in, in Gaza. So it will be an uphill struggle. You know, I think George Galloway will struggle to retain the seat if he, assuming he tries to defend it. I don't say it's impossible for him to defend it. He, he, you know, it's, it, it could well be close, but it, it will be difficult. Um, and so what you're going to see is some short-term fireworks in the House of Commons on days that are devoted to uh, British foreign policy and, and devoted to Gaza. I'm sure George Galloway, although he doesn't like the SNP, will be rolling up uh, should the SNP have another uh, manage to get another debate uh, on on Gaza. It'd be very, very in interesting to see. And, you know, the fact is people would, would flood from the bars to go and listen to George Galloway in a, in a way they wouldn't listen uh, to many MPs because he has those powers, those powers of rhetoric, powers of oratory. But, you know, He's one of 650 MPs. Yeah, Adam Bienkoff, our 
political correspondent has made the point previously that the economy will be the decisive factor. There are far more constituencies that don't have a significant Muslim population to whom this understandably matters greatly, the situation in Gaza. So this may not have a, a direct bearing on the outcome of the next election, except for perhaps in some constituencies. And I've heard a lot of conversation this morning from Liberal Democrats in Birmingham, for example, there are a couple of constituencies with significant Muslim populations where there is a history of Liberal Democrat support. Is it possible that the Workers' Party gaining momentum from George Galloway's victory could stand candidates in these areas, profiling Gaza, making it the forefront of their campaign and allowing the Lib Dems to perhaps overcome Labour in those areas? Yeah, it's, it's perfectly possible the Workers' Party of Britain may field a number of candidates in constituencies with large Muslim populations. The difficulty will be that those constituencies with large Muslim populations are pretty solidly Labour because the white working class or, will often vote Labour in those constituencies as well. So in some ways, Labour can afford to take a hit in terms of its Muslim vote and still win those constituencies. But it could certainly make things interesting for Labour in, in those particular constituencies. But I, th I think overall the picture remains pretty much the same in terms of the election. The polls will be unchanged. Labour well ahead of the Conservatives. Um, Starmer well ahead of Sunak, albeit not as far ahead of as his party is. And basically, um, Labour's still on course for a general election victory. In one sense, you know, the political there was a political earthquake last night, and yet... The, it, it was confined in some ways to, to Rochdale. It, the, you know, the, the aftershocks are not going to be felt, I think, more broadly within the British electorate. John, thank you. That's John Tong, Professor of Politics at Liverpool University. Also worth noting that the Reform UK candidate, Simon Danchuk, who had previously been a Labour MP in the constituency, came in sixth with fewer than 2,000 votes. I'm Adrian Goldberg. This has been the Byline Times podcast. Thank you very much indeed for listening. And if you want to support our work on the podcast, then please consider taking out a subscription to the Byline Times. That's our brilliant monthly newspaper. It is available on selected newsstands, but the way to guarantee a copy is to take out a subscription. And that way you'll not only get the best of our online offerings, but exclusive content to our print edition as well. So head over to bylinetimes.com and take out a subscription if you can. This has been a We Bring Audio production made in Birmingham. We'll see you again next time. Cheers now. Bye-bye.